But uh, the Lord this morning, as I had some time with him early, I got up early, and uh, I was just meditating, getting in the presence of the Lord, and and he began to show me this this outline of a foot, of the sole of a foot. And as I was as I was in prayer, and the the Lord began to speak to me that He was starting to share something with me, and the scriptures came to me about the promises of the of the promised land, wherever the sole of your foot will tread. And I want to read a few of those scriptures. So the Lord's changing it up this morning. Uh, I was all ready to preach fire and glory. <laughs> I mean, we may do that yet, but uh, I don't know if we'll do that today. But um, the promise of the Lord, let me throw my glasses on here, and let's just pray that the Lord would, would make known to us what he's saying to us today. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord says. Amen? I believe the Lord has something special for us, and it's for Diane, too, and Sandy, and all those who are not here, um, so that we can, we're going to get them that to them through the video, but... Um, Genesis 3, verses 14 through 17. I can look it up or I can just go by the screen here. It says, And the Lord said to Abram after Lot had separated from him, He said, Lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are northward, southward, eastward, and westward. That looks like all directions. For all the land which you see I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width, for I give it to you. This was his promise. Wherever he walked, he would receive that inheritance. It was for him. Abraham had the faith. He's the father of our faith. And, and we are now... You and I are now Jews because of our hearts have been turned to Christ. Christ has brought us into the unity, into the redemption, into the family of the promise of Abraham. So we are heirs with Christ. Okay? Next one is chapter 17, verse 8. Jane's working on that here. She's new at this. She's never done this. There you go. No, that's not right. Did I have the wrong one in there? Chapter 17, verse 8. I probably put the wrong one in. I had too many irons to do this morning. So, Oh, I got a motor. Okay. Also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are stranger, all the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. I know what I did, Jane. I put them in order. Okay. Now we're going to go out of order. Uh, chapter 15, verses 18 through 21. These are different experiences that Abram had with the Lord. I don't have that one. Okay, well, let's just skip it then. Let's go on to 22, 17 through 18. And this is after Abraham offered up Isaac on the altar. And he, was, he knew that God had to raise him up, the author of Hebrews says. He was being obedient to the word of the Lord. And so the key here is that for God to bless us into the inheritance of our land is we have to be obedient to the voice of the Lord. See that here's what the Spirit says, you know. And then God will do this, and he'll do that. And so God has a plan, and he has a purpose for you and me. Each one of us, every one of us, he has a plan and a purpose. And he wants us to be... Uh, a receiver of that plan and that purpose. And it has to come through our obedient heart towards him. Just Abraham's our example here. He wasn't perfect, was he? But he received and he walked in faith. So in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of your enemies. In your seed, all the nations of the earth will be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Huh. You might be saying, I'm just trying to get through the day. <laughs> Let alone to know that God has a mission for me, right? 
But he does. He has a mission for every one of us, and that comes, it comes supernaturally natural. It can even come naturally supernatural. It's the way he made you. He created you for good works. He created me for good works. He created us to do the works that Jesus did and even more. And so we need to learn how to hear the voice of the Spirit so that we can walk in the, in the, the destiny that he has prepared for us. He's predestined us. He's prepared a place for us to walk and go. Not all of us reach it, though. It's, it's, it's according to the, what we hear and how we obey. It's a simple message, but yet it's something that we need to be reminded of continually. Paul said these things are, you know, you may have heard these things before, but they're good that we hear them again so that we can apply them today. Because today is the day of salvation. You may have gotten saved like I got saved back in 1975 when I was 16 years old. But today is the day I have to make a choice to continue to walk in covenant with him. He's promised to you and me the blessings. But that, that's conditional. It really is. It's conditional upon our obedience. Now, it's based upon the obedience of Jesus to the cross, right? So we know that it's not all on us. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I don't want it to be on me. Do you? I want it to be, want it to be the, 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 the weight of what I have to do in my life to fulfill his will rests upon what Jesus did already. It's already a finished work. But I have to hear his voice. I have to be still and know that he's God. And we got to put out things. We got to shut things out and, and learn to hear his voice so that these feet can go tread upon the promises of God. I can begin to walk in covenant, as my old pastor used to say, arm in arm with him because he's leading the way he's directing my steps if I trust him with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding and begin to acknowledge him in all my ways he promises in Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6 to direct our paths but all of a sudden we come up against a, a suddenly that we weren't expecting I, you know I've been selling beef you know it's What's the beef, you know? <laughs> it's, it's good tasting, you know? And I had a, one of my former customers call me, my neighbor, uh, a couple weeks ago and said, I wanted to get a whole cow, two sides. And it's like, you know, yeah, okay. You know, so I got a, another butcher lined up and I got everything's getting set up and talked to him Thursday night. And uh, he was just, you know, wanting to know pricing. I said, I said I'll, you know, I have to get back with you on that a little bit. And then I got a call Friday night that he passed away suddenly. You know, it's like stuff, stuff happens. Life isn't an easy merry-go-round. I was shocked. I missed him. He was, a, he was a wonderful person. John Mooring was always a happy, smiling guy, you know. It, and it's like in one night he was in his chair and then gone. You know, and, and so I'm not worried about the sales of the beef. That's not what I'm talking about at all. I'm just saying that things happen that change our direction sometimes. And we have to put our face like a flint and say, I'm not going to be stopped by these circumstances. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to walk into the promises that God has for me until the last day of my life. Or he comes back, right? And so we got to get... <laughs> We got to get re-inspired by his word. We got to get refilled by Holy Spirit. We got to get more of his presence and more of his power so we can fulfill our destination that he's called us to do. Yes. He has plans, he has purposes. He wants us to follow them. And I felt like this morning that he's got he's got ministry for us, each and every one of us. Even you know, even some of you that are newer, Steve, he's got a ministry for you. He's got one for all of us. Kenny, he's got one for you. You minister to those horses all the time. That is a powerful ministry. And those, those horses minister to you, too. I saw some lady walking through our neighborhood, and she was petting Liberty on the head and just nuzzling up nose to nose, you know, and it was like there's an anointing there, you know. God, you got to do what God's called you to do. 
And so, there's more. Okay, Deuteronomy 11.24. God spoke to Moses that every place on which the sole of your foot treads shall be yours. The same promise he gave to Abraham came down to Moses. And then you go into Joshua then. Moses dies, and then Joshua gets this word. My, Moses, my servant, is dead, and it's now it's time for you to pick up your mantle and go begin to walk into the promised land. And so he goes here in verse 3, says, Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you as I have said to Moses. Now, if you're falling asleep, you might wake up if I just wave this in front of you. <laughs> okay, I'll put the tread back on so we can tread on the devil, right? That's right. You shall tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. That means you can go into a land where there seems to be giants, but they're not really giants. You know, they're just tall, big people. You got to go in there and, and know that God has given you power and authority so you can take down the enemy. He doesn't want you to succeed. He wants us to just draw back in fear. He wants us to draw back and, 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 and think that there's nothing really that I can do. But God said that if you will walk the land, wherever you go, it will be yours. Yeah. So what is your land? What is the promise God has given you? What is the dream you've had? Are you going to sit back and let the enemy rob you? Are you going are you, you know, to just have faith and believe that even in the mundane, even in the times when it seems like nothing's happening, are you going to have faith and believe that God, his word is true, it's forever, it's settled, he has you in mind, he has you in his thoughts. Jeremiah talks about his thoughts towards us, peace, blessing. He wants to give you a ministry to, to, to that accelerates each day, and it comes out of stillness quietness it comes out of fellowship with him walking in the joy of the lord which is your strength it comes it comes by knowing him and understanding him and and as a as a woman and a man come together in that kind of knowing he wants that intimacy that much intimacy it's an allegory so you can rest okay he wants that intimacy between him and us and when we have that intimacy, it's, it's a bond he'll never break. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He's with us always, even to the end, he said. So he wants us to trust in him. He will never harm us. He will never hurt us. He's in there. He's in our hearts, and he's ready to manifest at a moment's notice. He's ready to his presence is deep within our heart amen so okay hebrews 11 8 through 10 he just gave me these scriptures this morning so this is fresh loaf of bread do you like bread when it's freshly baked you remember in the 80s when they came out with all those bread machines and now nobody wants them right <laughs> you gotta clean them everybody just buys the bread so Oh, it's up there. Okay. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Not, he didn't know. That kind of helps us a little bit, doesn't it? Sometimes you don't feel like you know where you're going, do you? Sometimes it feels like, uh, I didn't know that was going to happen. Right? Right? I didn't know this circumstance was going to be there. I didn't know the wind and the waves were going to be there when Jesus told to go, us to go out in the boat, right? <laughs> and all of a sudden, oh, I, uh, you know, I remember going on Lake, what was it, Lake Huron with my brother-in-law, salmon fishing, lake trout fishing. He chartered a boat, five-foot waves. I turned green. We had to cut it short because I just couldn't do it any longer. I was, I was leaning over the boat feeding the fish. It was not fun. 
and we feel like that sometimes. We got in this boat, we're supposed to have a great time, and all of a sudden, I feel horrible. Something's come against me. Somebody said something. Somebody passed on a virus to me. <laughs> you know, whatever it is we're going through, we got to understand God's got this. He's got us in mind and in heart, and he has prepared a way for us to get through. And here he comes walking on the water. A ghost, you know, a spirit. Oh, no. It's a, our fears begin to rise up, and it's the, it's the one who has the answer to calm the storms. And he comes in, and peace be still. As soon as he got in the boat, the wind stopped. There were several different times, you know, when they had problems with waves. And Jesus always took care of it. And even the one time he said, what? Oh, you of little faith? Why have you hardened your heart? Didn't you just see me feed the 5,000? You know, and, and they had been out casting devils out. They'd been healing the sick. And they're afraid for their lives. And God understands that we are weak. And we're human. And he doesn't just condemn us when our faith falters, does he? He encourages us. He may rebuke us. (laughs) It's like, come on, you know better than this, right? And so in in the event of trying to go in to take the land, it means we're answering the prayer and we're fulfilling the decree of your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He's wanting us to be the conduits that bring his kingdom to earth. He wants us to be hearing what the Spirit says so that we can be overcomers. Revelations chapters 2 and 3 talks about the overcomers, and he says, he that hears what the Spirit says, I will bless you. With crowns, I will bless you with all these amazing things. And he wants us to understand that we have to believe God as Abraham did and watch him fulfill the promises that he's told us he would do. In fact, there's many promises that are just waiting to be discovered here in this word that he's given to us. And I mean by the spirit. I don't mean by just reading the word. I'm ta- you know what I'm talking about. You guys are just not your, you're in preaching to the choir, I know. But God wants us to begin to step it out. You know, step out. Peter stepped out of the boat. Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. He said, come. And he stepped out of the boat, and he made ground. Then he watched the waves, right? And he faltered. But what happened? What happened to him when he started sinking? Jesus grabbed him and pulled him into the boat. We got it made. (laughs) We, We got a safety net that's like you wouldn't believe. Now, it doesn't mean we don't have to... It doesn't mean it's not going to cost you everything. That's what I'm trying to say. It will cost you everything. Your life for his so we want to walk in the spirit, not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When we're dead, we won't walk in the, in, the, in the lust of the flesh. We'll walk in the spirit. So we die daily, as Paul said. We take up our cross daily, as Jesus said, and follow him. And that's the key to, to obtaining the inheritance that he has for us. It doesn't matter what it is. It, it, could, be, it could be your driver's license. You know, it could be your ministry that God has prophesied you would have that you haven't seen fulfilled yet. It could be your family members coming into the kingdom. It could be your neighbors stop cussing at you, you know, (laughs) or whatever. (laughs) There's leaving trash on your lawn. You know, you fill in the blank. God has something for each of us. I believe that. Do you believe that? Okay, God has some ground for us to cover. He has some ground for us to take. God, I'm just giving you some of the notes I have here. God wants us to know that the promise is still a promise, and it's still true. Amen? Amen. 
I was reading this week about Mary and Martha and Lazarus when he died and how Jesus is four days before he got back and he didn't get in a hurry. And when he got back, he was talking to Martha first, I think it was, and Martha said, if you'd been here, he'd have been healed. And <laughs> Jesus, the compassion of Jesus came in him so much when Mary came, all the people were following Mary because they thought they were going to mourn to the grave. And, and when Jesus saw him coven, coming, he said he groaned within himself. And then they got to the tomb, and he, he, he said that God would do something. When they got to the tomb, he groaned again. And that word groaned, I'm going to read you the definition of it. It's really Jesus groaned in the spirit, and if you want to look it up, that's John 11, verses 33 and 38. In verse 33, Jesus groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And in verse 38, Jesus again groaning in himself. It's from the word embri maomai, the root meaning to snort with anger. I'll repeat that. To, the root meaning is to snort with anger. But here it's specifically meant to be very angry and to be moved with indignation. You ever heard about this? this I, I just did a word study on this. And that's what the, 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 the theologian that did the lexicon, Thayer's, said it means here to be angry and to be moved with indignation. So I believe his groan was like, oh. Lazarus was dead. Sure, he wept, and he was overcome with emotion, but it was like he knew what God wanted to do. So he had this, this something rise up within him that had to deal with the situation. And God wants us to begin to groan in the spirit, groan to where we rise up with an anger that's moved with indignation to see this world the darkness that's present all around us to become light, to become saved, healed, and delivered. God wants us to begin to begin to speak the word of life. Even though it seems like it's falling on deaf ears, God has a plan still. And we must continue to persevere. You don't give up on a baby after its first or second trimester. Well, the world does, but God's people don't do that. He's given us strength to bring it to birth, yeah. to bring it forth. It's painful. But once this baby is born, then the joy, the scripture says, the joy comes into the mother's heart, and this thing is no longer a pain. It becomes a manifested fruit of the womb. Yeah. The works that you have done will come to fruition. So don't give up. <laughs> be like what's his name the British Prime Minister what was his name he said don't give never give up Winston Churchill yes watched the movie about him the other night never give up never give up my goodness if you give up you become a slave they would have become slaves to the Nazi Germans never give up even if it cost you your life and that's what the British Parliament was resolute when, when Winston Churchill came in there and they were expecting him to uh, bow down and go to the peace talks with the Italians. And he said, nope, we can't do that. We'll never give up, even if it costs us our life. Because he got the heartbeat of the people when he went on the subway and learned what they really, what the people really, that they didn't want to surrender. They didn't want peace talks. Never give up. Man, he has so much for us, and it's time for us to begin to walk in it. Uh, let's see here. I keep losing my spot here. Okay. Even though Abraham's children went through a delay of 400 years and then another 40 years in the wilderness, they did finally enter the promised land. Amen? Amen. When it seems like it's going forever and ever and ever and you're not seeing the promise being fulfilled. Some went on, Hebrews 11 says, not even receiving the promise, but their faith was unwavering. 
to the point where they even gave their lives, many of them. Wow. We have to think about this. Jesus paid the price for us, the ultimate price. And now we are bought with a price, and we are his. And if it means giving our life, it means giving our life. Are we, set, are we ready for that? Are we prepared to go in and fight the fight that we need to fight and even give our life if we need to doing it? So what is your promise? What is your land? We've got to obey the voice of the Lord. We've got to hear his voice to obey it. And then Hebrews 12, verses 25 through 29, talks about the danger of refusing to hear God. I didn't put 29 in there, did I? Okay. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, how much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, yet once more, I shake not only the earth, but I also, but also heaven. And I looked up heaven there. It means the whole universe. He's going to shake the whole universe. Stars, wormholes, everything is going to be shaken. Anything that can be shaken is going to be shaken. Yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of the things that are made that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Amen. Therefore, yep, one more. Since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Many rebelled against the promise in the promised land because of complaining. And none of them made it. Moses didn't make it. He complained about the people in anger. He was held highly responsible. We need to check our hearts and check our minds. We need the fire. We need the fire to burn out of us the things that that would hinder us from entering the promises that he has for us. Mark 16 gives us a real good idea of the promises. It's, and I, I could probably quote it, but let, let's read it. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name... In my name, go to every creature in the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons and they will speak with new tongues. Sandy was talking about that. They will take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Remember Todd White's testimony? He prayed for a 1,000 people, he said. He just went out and went crazy because he got on fire for Jesus. 1,000 people didn't get healed. But after about the 1,000th one, all of a sudden, he got a miracle. Somebody got healed. And now he's seen multitudes, multitudes healed. Don't give up. God wants to use you to pray for your neighbors. And that fact, that's one of the best ways to enter into the promised land is to go to someone and say, is there something I can pray for you? That's how we saw Al healed of his sciatic in our neighborhood, Al Gaines. When we went door to door, Jane and I, saying, you know, is there anything we can pray for you? Some of them said no. And we, no, thank you. They closed the door, you know. So, okay, we went on. Came to Al Gaines, and I'll tell this just for the sake of the video. Some of you've all heard this, and I've told this in Africa too because they, they love this story. We went in his backyard, and they were all drunk, and uh, <laughs> we just started talking to him. Is there anything we can pray for you? You know, they were 
saying, well, uh, his girlfriend was saying, I, I, would, I should be in church today, but I, I'm here drinking, you know. <laughs> it was, and it was just kind of, you know, we were just, we had such love for them. We went in there and loved them, and while I was talking to her, he, Al was going like this, oh, and like, he, I could see pain all over his face. He was leaning against the post under the deck, and I went over to him. I says, is there something I can pray for you? He goes, oh, my sciatic is just, oh, killing me, you know. I said, can I pray for you? And he said, yeah. So I put my hand on his chest. And I said, kingdom come, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We speak to this body and we command it to be whole. There's no sickness in heaven. So we command there to be no sickness here. We command him to be whole in the name of Jesus. That's the gist of what I said, if I can remember it right. And then I asked him, I said, Al, how does it feel now? Give me a percentage, 10% better, 20% better. He went. Okay, fifty percent, thirty percent. He goes, it's completely gone. And he started to cry, and he, and he lifted his hands and he said, "Oh God, forgive me of my sins, forgive me of my sins." And I said, I put a hand on his chest again. I said, God has touched you because he just lost his wife to cancer and he had a lot of pain from it. You know, God knows, and he wanted you to know that he still loves you and he cares for you. How many months later? Six, nine months later, he passed away. They found him back behind his shed. I believe that was his conversion. Now, I don't know for sure, you know, but my point is, is that these things just don't happen. You and I have to begin to walk into them, right? We have to begin to... to Take the footsteps to take the promised land that he's given us. Don't, don't listen to the devil saying you're not worthy because you're not. <laughs> Jesus is the worthy one inside of you. And you've got to begin to recognize who we are in Christ Jesus. And begin to know that Holy Spirit is resident within us. And he's, he's, he's waiting for our words to be spoken over this present darkness. Over over the people in our neighborhoods, in the pubs, people in our families, people at our workplace, wherever you find yourself, if you will let the Lord stir up the gift that's within you, you'll begin to take the sword of the Lord and begin to stick it in the swamp, and the devil will have to get out of the way. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. God wants us to begin to move out in power, and, in, and we are doing that. Don't get me wrong. This is not a belittling message, but it's an encouraging message that we can ramp it up a little bit. We can go forward now with victory, with power. Amen. Amen. Stop thinking about your failures. That's what I've done too much. I've thought about my failures too much, and it, and it, and it, and it what, what do you call it? It kind of ties me up. With anxiety, fear, perfect love. The Lord told me again yesterday, casts out all fear. A completed love. That's what it means by perfect. He's com- when he completes his love in you, it wraps you up like a warm blanket. They call them throws now. Don't throw them away. It's his presence. It's his power. And he wants to flow through you. To you and through you. Thank you, Father. So I wanted to pray for each of us here. And we'll pray for some that weren't able to make it here later. That God would expand your ministry, expand your and open your eyes and let your vision be increased to be able to begin to walk and take the ground for the Lord in your life. The dream you have, the purpose he's called you to, that you would begin to be able to see clearly and hear clearly his voice. And all that you have to do is walk in obedience to it. And you'll see the miraculous. You'll see the signs and the wonders that he's promised you that you can have. So, 
If that's something you want, I want you to stand right now, and I'm going to pray over you. Those of you who are online watching this, if you want to stand in your homes or wherever you're at or raise your hand in your car, if you're listening to it, I believe God wants to impart right now to all of us new strengths and an ability to hear his voice so that we can respond in obedience to see the kingdom of God come to us and through us. Amen? So let's pray right now. Just reach your hand out and receive it right now. Father, we receive now a spirit, your Holy Spirit, God, that we could hear your voice more clearer than we've ever heard it in our lives. And I ask, Father, that you would saturate us now with your words so that we can go and tread, take our soles of our feet and walk upon the promises that you have given to each of us, Lord. Whatever it is you've called us to, I pray for grace now to come to each person now that they could fulfill their destiny, that they could go out now and see you work in power, in signs, in wonders, and in miracles. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that not only would you give us an ear to hear, but you would give us a heart to obey. Give us the courage, Lord, like you told Joshua, Lord, to begin to step out and take the ground for the kingdom of God. God, you're going to come soon and return, Lord, and you're looking for those who are faithful and who will begin to speak your word, Lord, even now in the midst of the darkness we see in our world. So, Father, now I ask you, God, for each person that's got their hands raised and those online that are wanting to receive more of your power, of your Holy Spirit, that you would impart it now in the name of Jesus Christ. That your word, Father, would fill each of us, myself included, so that I would begin to speak boldly your word as the disciples did in the first century, God. And even though they were threatened, they were beaten, they were killed, they were tortured, they came back asking for more boldness. So, Lord, we ask you to begin right here in us, in this womb of this barn right now where we are meeting, God. Begin to work within us, Lord. Let the labor pains begin, God. Let us begin to fulfill our destiny and walk out in your will, God, as it is in heaven. So I ask you for a heart of compassion, Lord, on each of us, Lord, so that we can preach the gospel in any way possible, Lord through our voices, through our actions, through our deeds. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. I'm glad there was no music. It's by the power of the Holy Spirit. You don't need a minstrel. It's wonderful to have a minstrel, as they say. It, you know, it, it opens the soul to the spiritual dimension. But now the word of God has come to us. And and this is a rhema word. I believe I got this morning. So go with it. Go with it in the power in the name of Jesus Christ. And let God use you. Open your mouth. Watch. Be amazed at what comes out. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We give you praise. Let's just give him praise right now. Just give him praise. Just thank him. We're not going to rush out, Lord. We're just going to give you praise and give you thanks, Lord. I know it's late, but Lord, we just love you. We just love you. We thank you, God, because you have it all under control. And we, we cast away from us fear now, worry and anxiety and unbelief, and we take up the shield of faith in Jesus' name. Amen.